Hey YouTubers! Hey, it's Simply Sailing Family getting back at you again. I do apologize for not uh, having another upload a little sooner. Uh, to be perfectly honest, it's been really tedious going up and down the same routes. There really hasn't been a whole lot of new stuff to be putting up with my videos. The really cool stuff that has happened lately though, <laughs> we finally got to take vacation for a little while, so that was so much fun. We went camping and did a lot of fishing in Florence, Oregon. We actually pretty much hit up every little lake and decent sized river and uh, trout brook in the area and just had an absolute blast. So there's only a few pictures of that because honestly we were having too much fun. It didn't do a lot of pictures. <laughs> but there's some of those. some of the um, tracing and cutting out of pieces before I had to go back to work but since I have been back to work uh, Eric was able to get a few more things done and then he'll be able to get onto the truck here pretty soon with me Eric is actually doing that at the house morning guys Eric here with Simple Sailing Family and I'm down here in Warrington, Hammond, Oregon, visiting my old boat building mentor, who is actually a Kurt Hughes builder himself. He had been mentioned many times uh, in Kurt's dialogue in some of his paperwork, uh, Robel Anderson. Uh, I grew up as a kid when I graduated high school down here in Astoria, Oregon. Uh, grew up sailing a Kurt Hughes trimaran with him and today I'm going over the plans with uh, Robel and talking about what are some of the things that he's learned and done on the quad and although it's a different building technique and I'm doing the the core and fiberglass the quad was a 30 foot tube cat that was built out of plywood and fiberglass a lot of the same principles are there. So we've, we're now just kind of discussing some of the things that are in the plans, going over different ideas, some notable things as far as one of the big concerns was the 37 footer has a 102,000 pound riding angle. And when you think about that much pressure going on to uh, the sails and the rigging and everything is making sure all your, your points for all your uh, stays and everything are really well braced to include winches and stuff like that. Because uh, Robel had mentioned that he actually ripped the winch out of the quad one time sailing and uh, so it's definitely anything that's got to be hard mounted is going to have a lot of pressure on it making sure that we um, have adequate bracing behind it so that was one great thing to come out of this but Robo and I have been around for quite some time done quite a bit of things with uh, various boats and uh, he is my go-to guy for Kurt Hughes designs as well as multi-hulls because he's been doing multi-hulls for quite a while. Oh, you <laughs> And I got a picture of Robo. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm busy looking at the plans there.
So that whole stack, every board's got to get cut for the female jig. And so all lines and patterns for the female jig are drawn out. Tick marks help line up everything straight that it needs to be. And I start placing everything on this platform. And since we're doing the amas first, I will line up everything on one side of the platform and work from just one side of the platform and then when we get the first hull shell, half a hull shell complete, uh, I will take it and lift it off and set it on the side over here and then I will pull a second mold from the same one for the port side AMA. And then once it's done, then I just take and rotate these uh, 180 degrees and start pulling the uh, other half of the hull shell for port and starboard. Uh, it'll work out pretty well. We'll have everything set up. And once I get all four half shells pulled, we'll be able to start putting uh, the AMA holes together and laminating the two halves with the bulkheads in them. And once that's done, then we can finish fairing out the outside of the hull and glassing it. And we will have two complete amas for the 37 foot try. So right now I have all the stations cut for the amas. And as you can see, I started marking out my two foot increments for each station which is depicted by the plans and I will start standing up the uh, stations and getting everything set in a line. Uh, I'll secure these down then I'm going to mount on the side of the uh, jig here a uh, board on each end and run a straight line is when I took and drew out each one of the stations I always used the top end of the sheet on the full size pattern uh, to keep every station set in the position that it should be when I go to set it down and in the upright position on the jig so everything should line up to the actual form of the boat now I do have tick marks on every single one of the uh, stations identifying uh, all the different 90 degree from uh, the center and you can see the tick marks that are here and here so every station's got the tick marks I can uh, verify all my lineup as I go not only off of the straight line uh, string that I put up but also off of the uh, uh, marks that are from the plans themselves. So here in a few minutes I'll take more photos and shots of this thing as it gets stood up and you will see the first female mold for the Amas on the 37 foot Kurt Hughes trimaran. There's an issue with my security system I just bought so I could do the time-lapse videos. This is the Flo Florian uh, four camera security system with night vision that we decided to go ahead and install. So we're actually just unpacking and going ahead with the install process here.
Uh, we decided to go ahead and go with the uh, four camera system. We're actually only installing three out of the four that have the night vision because we know that a lot of the time we're probably going to be working into the night and the lighting in the garage actually isn't the most perfect for that. Can we see you yet? Oh! <laughs> I feel like this is a security office in the back room of a store somewhere. Apparently it didn't come with an actual hard drive. So I have to order that, get it installed, and we're still having trouble getting it to hook up even for a live feed. So I've got to do a little bit more research next time I'm home. Um, we got about halfway through what the issues were to try and resolve that. In the meantime, we're still going to be kind of back and forth with the camera phones and the GoPro and a couple other things. So we'll do the best we can to kind of piece it all together for you. I'll just keep on editing these videos and getting it all put together in single reels so you get to see where we're at. In the meantime, I want to say, hey, happy travels, and we'll get back with you all soon.